I'm Danielle. I'm an artist that creates stop motion animations, and I'm also a teaching artist at the Armory Center for the Arts. Today we're going to be making some work as well as exploring the work of Tanya Aguanina in her exhibit Borderlands Within La Frontera Adentro. Before we get started, I'd like to go over the materials that we will be needing. We're going to need two pieces of paper, scissors, a drawing tool, I just have a marker, and some tape. Lastly, you're going to want to find an object within your house that is significant to you. So I've just chosen this little keychain and more about that later. Lastly, if you have coloring tools, feel free to get those now, but that's going to be an optional add-on at the very end. The title of the exhibit, Borderlands Within, begins to tell us a little bit about Tanya's story. Tanya was born in the United States, but her family lived in Mexico, and she grew up having to cross the border every day for 14 years. Tanya uses this specific relationship with the border as inspiration for the artworks that she creates. We have a theme for today that we will be considering while exploring Tanya's work as well as making our own, and that theme for today is weaving. So what is a weaving? Weaving is a way of putting individual threads of usually wool or some sort of yarn together and you're able to create a fabric. Weaving traditionally is done by hand and has a long tradition. Tanya is interested in this tradition of weaving and thinking about how we can add new meanings or think about weavings in different ways. Today we're going to be thinking and exploring the process of weaving as well as asking ourselves, what can weavings represent? The work of art we are creating is inspired by Tanya's piece, Tierra. To begin, we're going to start off with some questions to be thinking about. So we'll start off very basic. What do you see? Does it remind you of something? What do you think the numbers and words mean on the leather labels? If you could touch these white stripes, what would it feel like? Can you guess what they're filled with? What does tierra mean? If you own this work of art, where would you put it? You can think about those answers to these questions for a moment. And then we're gonna start by looking closely at those labels that we noticed. So there's not only words, but they're also numbers. And if you recognize the numbers, they're in a format of longitude and latitude, which is a system that creates a grid out of the earth and gives every location on earth a unique set of coordinates. As well, the words are used to be describing a specific location on earth. What do you think those locations are, or why do you think the artist chose those specific locations? It turns out these are places the artist chose because they were special to her. For example, one of the locations is where her grandmother's house was, and another one was the spot where she had her first kiss. The last part of the artwork that we're going to investigate involves using the title, which we know is Tierra. Tierra means land in Spanish, and the artist actually sewed those white tubes of nylon and filled them with the soil or dirt from these special locations that she had chosen. The leather tags are giving us information about the dirt inside. Now that we know this, how would we answer the question, what does this weaving represent? We're going to continue thinking about this question as we make our work of art. Today, I'll be showing you how to make your own weaving out of paper. The first step will be cutting out the strips. So grab one of the pieces of paper and you're gonna wanna fold down about an inch and a half, maybe the length of a finger or so. What you're trying to do is create a square and cut off that extra piece of paper. Now you're left with a square. Fold the square in half and fold it in half again. So you've divided the paper into quarters and then you're gonna wanna cut them out so you're left with four strips of paper. Keep that initial strip that you had cut to the side. So now that you have your four strips, we're going to begin to decorate them. In Tanya's work, Tierra, she created those nylon tubes and filled them with dirt from those specific locations. 
Today we're not going to be doing that. However, we're going to be inspired by that idea of associating specific strands of the weaving with locations that are meaningful to us. So you're going to want to decorate your strips, keeping in mind places outside that are special. And I think maybe we can draw inspiration from this experience of quarantining and reflect on places that we miss being able to go that are outside. So I can show you what I decorated as inspiration and then you can decorate your own strips. So here's one strip that I decorated that is kind of a panoramic landscape of the beach. You see some details. You can also, as opposed to like a big landscape, you can individually choose specific objects that you'd find in that location. Once again, kind of a beachy scene. Another strip I decorated was keeping in mind the sounds that I hear. So at the beach, you hear the crashing of waves. You can just decorate a strip dedicated to the sounds that you hear in that space that you miss. I also really love to go to the movies and I haven't been able to do that. So I've decorated this strip as things that I see in a movie theater. And lastly, I decorated a strip, um, my drive to work. I don't hear that beeping and honking of cars on the freeway as you know, you normally used to. So you can go ahead and decorate your strips. You want to be able to fill up the entire strip. You have a lot of room there to work with. So don't be shy and go ahead and fill up those strips. And you only need to do four, but I've given you some examples and some things to think about as you're drawing, like sounds, things, you can make a map, you can make a landscape. Really, you're free to take this part of the creative project that we're doing and think about what is meaningful to you and reflect on that. Tanya's work has places like her grandmother's house or places like where the border wall meets the ocean. And these are really specific images that are meaningful to her that she's putting into her art. So. I'd encourage you to try and do the same. So now that you have four strips fully decorated, we can move on to step three, which is our blind contour drawing. But first we have to prep that second blank sheet of paper. So remember that extra strip of paper that I had asked us to keep in mind on the side? We're gonna grab that now. And you wanna line up that piece of paper onto the edge of your new blank sheet. You can use your marker and just draw a line indicating where they match up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this, as you can see, mine isn't. It's just a reference. Once again, we're trying to create that square shape. So now we're gonna do an activity with that special object from inside. And you know, I like to take pictures and one of my good friends gave me this keychain. I haven't been able to see them in a while. So this is a special object to me and you're gonna wanna put it in front of you in a place where you can see. So the activity that we're about to do is a blind contour drawing. And as the title gives us a hint about, we are going to be blind to our drawing. So rule number one is you cannot look at your drawing as you're doing it, which is very hard and we want to make things perfect, but the idea of a blind contour is actually the concentration between your eye and the pen. And it's not actually about what the, the final product looks like, but it's more about the process of observing an object. So first rule is you can't look at your drawing. And the second rule is that once your pen gets on the page you can't lift it up until you're finished with the drawing so basically what you're trying to do is make your pen work at the speed of your eye as your eye follows along so my eye will trace over Snoopy's hat and go over his nose and create maybe a little dark circle for the nose and my eye is registering all these details and my hand is just moving at the same speed as my eye sounds kind of intimidating but it's okay, they're not meant to look perfect. And another thing is that you're gonna wanna work below the line that you've created on the sheet. So I'm gonna get started now with my blind contour and I'm gonna move my object to the side just so I move it on the left side so I'm not cheating. And another helpful thing would be if you wanted to put a newspaper underneath just so no tables are getting dirty if you do draw over the edge of the page. So I'm gonna get started with my blind contour and Remember, no looking at the page once you begin. So, going over the hat, 
I'm drawing the chain, the links are interlinking. See this ring that goes around, the Snoopy's ear, the eye, and a big nose. Snoopy has a big nose. I just see a little bit of the other ear. And then jump down. It's holding a camera. I'm going around the edge of the camera. I have a hand holding it. And the shirt arm. See these little feet sticking out and pen up because I'm done. And so you can see, it actually really doesn't look, these don't look the same, but you know what I've done? I've observed it very closely with my eye and you can kind of unpack your blind contour, which I think is really cool. Like you can find the nose and that's where I was looking at the ear and the eye, the camera and the feet. And so there is, you have managed to capture your object, even though it doesn't look anything like what it actually does. So now that I've done my blind contour, feel free to fill in the background space or maybe add some lines. You'll see it adds a nice texture pattern onto the paper weaving. As you can see, I added some background lines just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you'll see it'll stand out a little bit better. Also, if you have other colored markers and you wanna fill in the background, or if you wanna do more blind contours of other drawings that are objects that you have around the house, feel free to fill up the space in that way, but I'm just gonna do this really quick. So now my blind contour stands out a little bit more. Now we're going to prep our other section of the weaving, and we're gonna do that by folding this into quarters again, except hot dog style, so like that. Folding our drawing in quarters so that's two folds you're gonna open it up and once again three creases for four sections we're gonna cut up and stop at this line right here I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and so here is what it looks like so once we've done that and we have our four decorated strips we are ready to weave. So I think what the first thing you should do is arrange it in the order that you would like. So to begin, you're gonna wanna fold up the first section, skip over the second, and fold up the third. Then we're gonna grab some tape, and we're gonna do that trick where you just fold it onto itself, and we're gonna put it on the two strips that are facing down. Then I'll grab my first strip, and we just wanna line it up as close to the top as we can, letting the tape stick it down. So our first woven strip is in place. Then we put down parts one and three. To make the second strip, we're gonna put up the two even strips. The parts that weren't up before are now up. And remember, don't force it to go up, only fold it at where it meets the last strip. Now we're gonna do the same process, grabbing the tape, and we're gonna put it on the same exposed spots as before towards the top. I'll grab my second strip of the weaving and you wanna position it once again as far up as it can go. So it's hitting the very bottom of this woven strip so it can't go any further. Let it sink back down onto the tape and secure it. So as you can see, the principle of weaving is this repetition of over, under, over, under. Under, over under, over, and this is over, under, over, under. So we're gonna do, for the third strip, we're gonna do the same as the first strip. The odd ones are the same. So it's the third strip, we're gonna want one and three to go up. And if the one, two, three, four isn't obvious, I'm just gonna label the top of this just so we're all on the same page. So we're lifting up one and three, same circle tape technique putting it down where the next strip is going to go. Easy peasy, lay down this next strip as high up as it can go, get it stuck down there. And then since it's an even strip, number four, we're gonna just put up two and four, so you can see, and put the tape in the last two spots available, down there and down here. Now it'll also be helpful to put tape down on the back of two and on the back of four just so that they're not flapping everywhere. But first put down, connect it to one and three, and then put these guys down on top to complete it. And there you have it. 
made a paperweight bag. 